Oh, ladies and gentlemen, it is Monday, and I have unbuttoned too many buttons here. What is going on here? This is not that kind of show. Ladies and gentlemen, it is Pickup Lines, though, presented by Gomez Law, and you know Gomez Law fights. They fight all the time, year-round, uh, in the courtroom and lately in the boxing ring. Uh, next month, they are promoting or, or putting on a huge boxing event at uh, the Techport Arena, the Boeing Techport Arena, uh, beautiful facility, uh, with Jesse James Leha and many other talented fighters, and so we'll be talking about that in the days to come. Uh, but welcome to everybody who's coming on. I know um, the kiddos are out of school. It's the countdown to Christmas is on. What are we, a week away from today? Uh, so maybe you're doing some shopping or some relaxing or baking or prep, wrapping gifts, whatever that looks like, and you've got pickup lines on with you. I certainly appreciate it. Uh, today we are continuing a series of interviews uh, in partnership with City Education Partners where we're taking issues related to education and really just shining a large spotlight on them and giving uh, my guests the opportunity to come in here and talk about what is meaningful to them. Um, and something uh, today, I, 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 they're three for three so far. This is the fourth interview. Uh, and, and everybody that I've met through this partnership, uh, really, I mean, weeks later, I'm still talking about them and people still tell me about these episodes and their stories and what they're doing. It's just really, really compelling. So normally when I have pickup lines, I use a five by seven card, right? Well, uh, Dr. Dr. Langston Clark is going to join me in a minute. And some, you know, sometimes you get into a room or, or, or into a car with somebody or in a space and you just realize their intelligence level, it's like they're playing varsity and I'm just over here trying to make the freshman team. Like it's just, like I started reading about him and I realized I could not fit everything on a five by seven card. So I went with the eight, eight and a half by 11. And this isn't even everything, but it's all I could fit on one sheet. So without further ado, let me bring him in. And I wanna make sure I get his title. Associate Professor at the University of Texas at San Antonio, UTSA. Uh, in the College of Education and Human Development, among many, 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 many other things, Dr. Langston Clark is in the house here, all dressed up with the Roadrunner tie on as well. Yes, I'm representing today. I noticed that. Now you guys were on winter break though. That's right. Which, and I was recalling that the life of a, when I was in college, I remember those winter breaks were a lot longer and, and you could get a lot more done and very enjoyable. It is, it so, is very much so. Well, thank you for taking some of your winter break to be with me. Thank you for having me. I was just telling our audience, I've enjoyed uh, all the guests that I've met, uh, particularly with City Education Partners, and, and they, they found you, and they said, Ernie, you gotta talk to this guy. This guy, and like I said, I start reading your resume, your LinkedIn bio, art, Google search, and a number of articles uh, come up. I wanna start with, with kind of your origin story, because you're not originally from San Antonio, but you've been here for a while. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I was originally born in Buffalo, New York, uh, then my family moved to Pittsburgh and we finally settled, finally settled down in New Jersey. And so from the end of elementary school through high school, I grew up mostly in New Jersey. And so um, wound up coming here uh, from North Carolina where I went to undergrad at North Carolina A&T, then went to Ohio State, went to UT Austin. Yes. My advisor, my mentor got an email from UTSA and what they wanted in somebody for the position. Right. to uh, lead their physical education program, fit what I do. And so I've been here since January 2015. So you heard correct, physical education, as in PE. That's right. Um, which may be something that you don't think about very often. I can remember a time not too long ago, I don't know if it was around the pandemic or, or when it was, where, where there was serious talk about school districts is doing away with PE altogether, or certainly lessening the amount of time yeah. that kids would spend outside on the playground. And I can't imagine that went very went over very well with you. Well, you know, we, we, we've been talking about this for years, people who are like in the PE Academy, right? So right. Uh, there's a whole number of us with PAZs and PE. You may not think that, but we're, we're, there's, there's a whole community of us. And some of the research actually says that when you decrease physical education, you de decrease recess, you don't see academ academic achievement going up. And so from a research perspective, PE is actually really good not 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 just because it it takes away from what what students learn academically but it actually enhances it especially at the young ages like cognitive function yeah is very much related to like how much physical activity uh that students get so it's an important part of the school day 
although we may not always recognize it as such. I mean, I was just hearing earlier this morning about vitamin D deficiencies. Yeah. And for no other reason, we're talking about kids who are stuck in a classroom all day long or they come home go straight to their devices or they lock, they, they close the door in their bedrooms and they're on the, you know, whatever on their screens and they're just not outside getting sunlight. That's right. That's right. And the way that you get sunlight is in two ways during school, recess and PE. So yeah, yeah, yeah. So you literally have devoted your, your adult life. And I know I didn't start when you were an adult, your, your obsession with physical education and PE, but, but your career to, to this, did I read that it was at sixth grade where, where you kind of got your first, um, experience in dealing with this and I guess realizing that this is kind of the direction you might want to go? Yeah, it was, it's really interesting. Um, in sixth grade, there was this uh, program called Peer Mentors and it was actually the PE teachers at the time who selected kids that they thought, you know, were, were good students and whatnot to work with the kids with disabilities at the end of the school day on Fridays. Right. And so that was like my first entry point into like actually teaching. And so it was a great experience for me made me very comfortable working with people with disabilities. And yeah. um, like, as I reflect back, like that's probably the reason why I got into education because Ms. Graham said, Langston, go do this. Yeah. And I did, so yeah. But that's crazy that, it, I mean, at it, sixth, sixth grade, you kind of honed in on this and realized that this was kind of the direction you wanted to go in. So I don't, I don't know if I like really honed in on it, but it was the first seed of many. I see. And led into like, things that I did in high school that were right. related to careers and education. And um, sometimes subconsciously, we don't know the seed yeah, is being planted. Sure, and so sure. I think in a lot of ways that experience was, was it for me. But there was a specific teacher or an educator. A lot of times people in your case grew up with someone that influenced them so much uh, that, that, that they decided to follow into a career in education. You know, there's, there's, there's so many of them. Um, but I, I think of three in particular, and one of them, I can't remember their name. So one is Miss Graham. Okay. She was like the, the best PE teacher in the world, right? Everybody loved her. The other one is a man by the name of Mr. McKenzie. Uh -huh. he, he was actually my sixth grade teacher. So he probably like was part of the, the reason why I got selected for that program. Right. He's the only man that I had as like my full classroom teacher in elementary school. Got it. And then there was this woman, and God forgive me, I forgot her name. Uh -huh. um, there was a program where there was a daycare in my high school mm. and this lady was the teacher. She ran the daycare, but then yeah. she also taught the high school students how to teach in the daycare. And so she was like really formative to me actually being in like an official, like teaching sort of capacity. I was student teaching basically in high school before, you know, our students, they student teach at the end of their senior year, but I wasn't even in high school yet yeah. when I was student teaching. So unreal. Yeah. But th those, do you miss those winters in Buffalo? But you, I do actually. So really? okay. listen, hear me out. Okay. I left I left Buffalo when I was nine years old. Okay. So as a nine year old, the winter is awesome. You get school schools off. You go outside <laughs> and you play. You get the sleds. So like my my perspective of like those harsh winters are that of a child and not of an adult that has to drive through it. So shoveling snow. It was fun back then. Like, boy. <laughs> Like when you're when you're nine years old and you're over your dad, dad, can I shovel the snow? Like you, I mean, okay. you want to do it? I mean, because I can count on one hand, literally in my entire life, because mm -hmm. I lived in South Texas basically, and the only other place I've ever lived is Arizona, so it's even more hot over there. But my point is, I I don't know that I've ever shoveled snow meaningfully, like you, certainly like you have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's 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 definitely not <laughs> like if we were, if it was snowing in San Antonio, it's not something I would want to do. Yeah, I get yeah, it. Yeah. We're adults now. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's a pain now. But um, anyway, uh, we were talking earlier before we came on about the the awards and everything. You have been uh, you you've been given awards over the years for your work and everything. I, was it most recently you were named a, a Piper Professor Award recipient? Was well, that was earlier this year? Yeah, 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 mm -hmm. yeah. And yeah. that's a statewide. I mean, it is. Yeah, that's a big deal. It is. It is. Um, and I would say that 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 award is meaningful because the Piper Foundation appreciates teaching and education. And so whereas whereas you know there's oftentimes this big push to be like this hardcore research enterprise which is a good thing um yeah. I I for me like I come into like my work as a teacher someone having been trained since I was like 18 like in 6th grade really yeah. to be an educator and so like I really appreciate the opportunity to be in a classroom and do good work with the students. So it says here I, I read it, you only they only recognize 10 college professors every year from around Texas. So yeah. that's an exclusive club to be in. It is it's 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 really competitive and 
I would say I want to give a shout out to the Piper Foundation because we don't always get recognized as scholars for the work that we do in yeah. the classroom. Yeah. So you you got a lot going on. We were talking about podcasting before we came on the air and, and all of this. If you were to introduce yourself to, to a stranger out there when you're out socializing and you were to explain to them in, in layman's terms, what is it that you do for a living? What are your passions? How would you do that? Okay, this is interesting. Um, I've been working on this because you know how I have that thing where you try to introduce yourself to somebody but don't say like what your job is trying to be more interesting <laughs> right so one thing i would say is is that part of my job is to create knowledge okay um and the other part of my job is to train people who transmit knowledge and so i would say as a scholar like i do research and so part of what i'm supposed to be doing as a research is creating new knowledge that is meaningful to the society mm -hmm. meaningful to communities so that we can progress um progress humanity right and the other part of that is is like pouring into and mentoring students and so I teach teachers, mm. um, and that's something that I take very seriously. And, I, and I, it's actually the best part of my job is teaching teachers. How has your job, though, changed? As, I mean, the, the teaching position or, or the evolution of teaching, uh, having come off the pandemic and with social media and those kinds of things, how has it made your job either more difficult or, or easier? Ooh, that, that's an interesting question. I think, I think it has made me have to be more creative because I understand that the way students engage with the screen yeah. um, is at times captivating for them. And so my approach to teaching in the classroom has to be more interesting than what they get on the screen. And so part of what I wanna do is because, you know, I'm a physical education person, I right. integrate a lot of physical activity, games and teamwork into the lessons that they actually get in my classroom. And so it's not just a lecture, I try to make things a bit more, more interactive. When you were, you know, 2020 is, and the, the world is shutting down mm -hmm. and you're realizing schools are closing, I think it was right after spring break, it, you know, they started closing all the schools. And you just realize at the height of COVID and the pandemic, I mean, we couldn't even get close to each other, much yeah. less much less have PE. Yeah. You know, uh, what, were you, what were you thinking? And, and I mean, did you think we were going to come out of that or how it would change what what you did? Oh, man. So... I, I I had really anticipated that all of what we did would be completely changed um, post COVID and, and not that we would be online more. I actually thought once COVID was over that we would be teaching students in more authentic learning environments. Like I, I, I had anticipated that we would be, instead of me teaching my classes in a UTSA classroom, mm -hmm. that we would actually be in a classroom K through 12. Like in the classroom with the students to kind of make up for the fact that we have spent so much time on the screens that it's time to actually do a complete pendulum swing yeah. and be in the most authentic learning environment as possible. I remember, well, like I have three kids and some of them, and I know stories of other kids who, who flourished in the virtual at home setting and others who just couldn't handle it. Like yeah. they, they, they missed that social interaction and that one-on-one -on -one teacher that you can't get on a screen, yeah. but that you that you have that face to face in a classroom setting. Yeah, so I, I think especially for someone who's working in, in physical education, yeah. but then also like has a part of what I do teaches teachers to work with people with disabilities in mm -hmm. physical activity settings mm -hmm. was to uh to really impress upon my students the importance of actually being outside. Right. And so you think about what I do what I do is actually the complete opposite of learning online. Like we learn outside our students, like sometimes you touch people in a physical education yeah, yeah. environment. And so I think a lot of the students actually appreciate what I do because it's the opposite of what they get in a lot of the other classes. Yeah. yeah. So. Your greatest memories of, of, of childhood recess or PE, the playground, like, did you have a specific favorite part? Like Ooh. you would always go to first. Ooh. My my favorite part of the playground, I just, I remember in middle school, the first thing that comes to mind is in middle school where playing basketball, and it was interesting, we played, my 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 middle school girlfriend was like the best athlete in uh -huh. school. And so like she could ball better than me, ball better than half the boys when we were in middle school. So we would play basketball against the girls sometimes. And so that, that was fun. Another thing is I remember it was, sixth grade, Mr. McKenzie, the guy who okay. I told you one of my right. favorite teachers, right. he was like, man, this guy wouldn't let up on us during recess. Like Mr. McKenzie was like six foot five. Oh man, we, you know, we, we're like five feet tall in sixth grade. <laughs> Mr. McKenzie was there dunking on us. Boom. What? Boom. And he would be talking mess too. 
in a playful way, but he didn't care. Like he didn't yeah. let up with us because we were smaller than him, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. 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 Oh my gosh. Uh, well, well, that's super cool. Um, some of my greatest memories, yeah, were on the playground and everything. And I just, and back, back then we used to get like 40 minutes. Like, yeah. It was a long time. Oh, yeah, now like 20. Now it's, if, I mean, if you're lucky, if yeah. you're lucky. So you mentioned you went to UT, uh, well, you teach at UTSA, you went to UT, so you're a Longhorn fan. Yes. Okay, okay. Because uh, I know they get, they're in the national championship picture here and everything, so yeah. you're fired up about that. So you went to Ohio St State for your master's, but then you got your your Bachelor's of Science at North Carolina Agricultural and Technical State University. I was trying to remember what their mascot was. They're the Aggies. We're the Aggies. Okay. Aggie pride. Okay. Not Texas Aggies. Not A&M, yeah, yeah. but yeah. another... Not those Aggies. No, not those Aggies. But that's a historically black university, yes. correct? Yes, yes, yes. And I know you've worked closely with, with them or, or just trying to, to elevate the, the, the quality of the, 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 the experience for African Americans in education and, and, and physical education. Like, that is something you have really focused a lot of attention on recently yeah so um i would say that i have benefited from my experience working at minority serving institutions starting with north carolina a and t and so part of my research deals with how do we at minority serving institutions hbcus msis like utsa mm -hmm. um minority serving institutions right, right? yeah mm -hmm. okay. Okay. how do we how do we create the best teacher education environment for yeah. our students who are going out um not they like we're training students to go teach anywhere but i think what's special about a school like utsa a school like north carolina a and t is is that we're really preparing students to go back and teach and educate and uplift their own communities and so um that's from a research perspective but then mm -hmm. also in the work that i do as a teacher educator teaching teachers that's that's really core to to what i believe in and what i've been doing so. yeah so in, in in your research, I mean, what are there disturbing trends or surprising statistics or, or something that kind of maybe threw you, you know, kind of surprised you that that you might be able to relate to our audience? You know, what's interesting is like in in my research, I find mostly positive things. Mm -hmm. um, it's 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 really interesting. Um, one of my mentors works at Houston Tillerson University. He was at Ohio State when I was there, and so I've done some some of my research with him. And there's this, this different type of care that I think we exude in teacher education at minority mm -hmm. serving institutions. And so it's, it's what I call a culturally sustaining care. Mm. And so it's not what we call soft caring where we have pity or low expectations mm -hmm. for students. It's having the highest expectations for students and caring for them in a way that meets their needs culturally, socially. But then also, like I said, we aren't preparing students to go, we, we're preparing students to be able to go work anywhere, but yeah. in particular, we're teaching them to go back to build up and sustain their own communities and themselves and their families and things like that. So. Yeah, yeah. We are speaking with Dr. Langston Clark of UTSA, uh, just a fascinating conversation where we're talking about his research, uh, kind of focusing on the intersection of athletics, uh, race, and education. And you know, uh, I mean, athletics, football, sports is, is so big here in Texas, in this part of the country. Um, do you, how much research have you done on that or just the correlation between um, the, the sports, high school sports and, and just what, what you're seeing? So I haven't looked much at high school sports, um, but I have looked at undergraduate students who are in uh, athletic programs like, uh, I can't say the name because of uh, IRB, but like big time college sports, right? right. And so here's something that's interesting. And, I, and I, I think what's unique about the work that I do is that I don't always look for the negative. Sometimes I'm looking at some positives. And yeah, so yeah. the first research project I did in graduate school was, was an article by the name of Diamonds in the Rough. Mm -hmm. And we looked at these African-American males who were successful on the field, who were successful socially on a college campus and who were successful educationally and one of the things that we found was that they had complex identities and that they didn't just see themselves as football players they saw themselves as people who were going to be highly educated they saw themselves as students they saw themselves as future businessmen they saw themselves as people who were wanting to engage and be educators and yeah. uplift community and things like that and so taking that research and applying it how do we and I think this is for like a lot of boys. Mm -hmm. How do we build complex identities among boys so that when they become men, mm -hmm. they don't view 
the only pathway to success to be just sports. Right. What about for females though, for girls? Is it? Ooh. So for, for women, it's a little different. Yeah. I think because women know that their opportunities to ascend and like make millions of dollars. And in some cases now with the men, it's billions of dollars. Mm. They don't exist in the same way. Mm. The women's realization that, um, women are almost in a situation where they have to have a complex identity early. So it, that's, I'm not saying it's not an issue for women, right. but the idea that all your, all your hopes are, and dreams are wrapped up in becoming a professional athlete aren't as much of a problem for women as it is for boys and men. Yeah, it's really, when you think about it, I mean, how often do we sit there and just stop in the course of the day and think about PE or physical education, exercise, activities, those kinds of things, but when you really break it down, I mean, You've spent and you've written a couple dozen articles or papers, and you're published many times over. Yeah. Um, what in your line of work? What else would you like to do, or what are some other career goals that you have? So, uh, career goals. Well, one of the projects we're working on right now at UTSA is uh, we got a grant to help support and train some more minority males to become teachers. And so, right mm -hmm. now, that's one of the big things that I'm interested in. Um, and although I think that will be a great research project, like for that, I'm more interested in the people, right? I don't want to yeah. put the knowledge over the humans. And so I think we have a unique opportunity to tap into the boys that are living in our community here in San Antonio and create a pathway for them to become teachers, to do meaningful work other than just sports, other than just um, playing games. And I think that's an important part of our culture and our society. But I think there are other meaningful ways other meaningful pathways that we can get men into the um into teaching and doing good work so do you feel like we're going to be able to hold on to the traditional outdoor recess and pe time or is it eventually going to go away? i actually think i actually think at some point it's going to expand i think as as people become more and more and i know that there are there are constraints in terms of policy and expectations mm -hmm. and testing but i think as more and more people get into uh, starting their own schools, more and more people get into being principals, administrators, policymakers, that we're yeah. going to find that there's going to be like, I think there's going to be a creative revolution in education and it hasn't happened yet, right. but don't be surprised if it sneaks up under us right under our noses. But is that the star test? Is that because while a lot of people have said they, that PE suffers because the teachers would, would like to have more classroom time to prepare because they're under so much pressure to yeah. perform with the star test. I, testing has definitely not been good for the amount of time that people get um, doing recess, spending time yeah. outdoors. But we find that time for athletics, though. Practices like, and games. Yeah, we, and, we, no, we have, you're right. We, we find that time for <laughs> athletics. And so if we find it for athletics, yeah, we can find it for physical education, which I want to know is not the same as athletics, right? Physical yeah, education right. is learning about maintaining and caring for your body physically through physical activity right. throughout the lifespan in sport doesn't necessarily do that let me give this quick example go right, right ahead yeah let's say let's say we're playing sports and I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna talk about football okay if you go to a typical football practice football practice although there's some conditioning in there football practice is not the greatest amount of physical activity most of the time you're standing around mm -hmm. the linemen are in a three-point position yeah the quarterback they're just standing around and so the physical activity is really quick. You're not really hitting each other very hard. Yeah, they're not. Yeah. It's, it's not, it's not right. the most active, you know, use of, like, physical activity. Okay. And so that doesn't compensate for the needs, the human needs mm -hmm. that we actually have to have in order to maintain our health and be physically active. And so I, I think there's an opportunity to shift some things, and I remain optimistic that I think people are going to start to challenge the way we think about schools. I, I, I see some schools integrating going outdoors and hiking and exploring as part of science and all of that is physical yeah. education in a way and also physical activity so yeah no i'm with you i think the kiddos yeah put those devices down put them down get outside for a little while um so i noticed when you walked in to or you got into the car you brought in what, what appears to be a comic book with you yeah and i've been staring at it out of the corner of my eye for the last half hour wondering what because i don't have it in my notes here yeah uh what what is would you like to show our audience what yeah. you have here and explain? So this is one of my Wolverine comic books from when I was a little kid. Now, this is significant because um, I think oftentimes we talk about the difficulties that, that boys are having and that boys of color have mm. educationally and with literacy. And, you know, people don't know this, but although I like I have my Ph.D., 
I got tenured early. I got my doctorate when I was 30. I got tenured before I was 40. All, all, of, the, all of these academic accomplishments, I'm a thinker. People have most of the time recognized that I'm really smart. I was held back in the first grade. What? And, and part of that is because I, I'll never get rid And my mom gets on me about this. I remember my older brother being in first grade and telling me he had homework. When I was in daycare, I was like, I'm not doing homework. Like I, I told him, I'm not doing homework. So first grade, I wasn't doing any of the work. But then this TV show came on called The X-Men. And then X-Men came on that, that my second year in first grade, and it blew my mind and it changed my world. And so when I started reading, I started reading comic books. And so I say that to say that although it may seem like boys, boys of color are disengaged from the learning process, that when something piques their interest, mm -hmm and draws them in that could be the catalyst for transforming their outlook transforming the way that they interact with their education and that's what comic books and the x-men have done for me and they're still around the x-men are around. still around that's right was it wolverine then so you know wolverine is my favorite wolverine I, wolverine's like everybody's favorite growing up so like you know i had my mom buy the subscription like we was getting comic books every month she was reading the comic books with me. There's great stories in there. There's great thinking in there. There's great themes about humanity and what's right and what's wrong and the complexities about all of that. And so uh, comic books really taught me how to think at a very young age. And so, um, like I said, there's, there's a lot of opportunities to tap into what boys are interested in. And I think sometimes we just have to pay attention and get the opportunity for them to excel. For someone who didn't want to do homework in first grade, I yeah. mean, you you have more degrees than... <laughs> I will never have in my life. So um, that's remarkable, man. That That's crazy. Yeah. Um, that, that that would have happened. Do you have, do you remember back at that time when you were being held back? Like what that did to you or, or when that decision was made? You know, it's crazy. I was so naive. Like I loved my first grade teacher. I wasn't trying to leave my first grade teacher. So everybody else, my older brother, my oldest brother, because I tell him, Langston, when they said you're being held back, I was sad. I was like, what is I wasn't sad. I love my first grade teacher. Yeah. And so like, to me, I just got to do first grade over again. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't really internalize that as a problem, although other people may have. So, but you think that decision impacted you in a way that, I mean, you just like, oh, it was positive. Like, it was only positive. Cause I think, look at the, you now. I think at the core of things, I was probably really immature. Wow. Right. And so that extra year to mature and grow into who I was going to be growing into, so yeah. to speak. Um, was necessary. Man, that's just, that's fantastic. That's fantastic. So, well, you, so you need, now you need to come up with a comic book. I know. I mean, you could be like... I have some stories. Yeah, I have some, a, stories. Yeah, I I have some stories. I don't know if I could do the artwork, but I definitely have some stories. I bet there. you at UTSA there's an illustrator over there or somebody. You know, that, you're right. There's probably, there's art somebody. department, right? Yeah, yeah, you yeah. find somebody. Somebody could do that, yeah. Yeah. Langston Clark, one of the X-Men. I mean, you, that's a cool name anyway, yeah. just to yeah. begin with. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and there's a character for me in there somewhere. Yeah, yeah. Now winter break. I mean, you you look distinguished. You've got the UTSA. You got yeah, the tie on everything. Do you, can you turn it off during winter break? Oh yeah, like, it's, it's like, off. Like it's off. I wore this. I don't know if Taylor Amy's gonna be watching. So I, I, I need to make sure <laughs> that I, that I'm rep, I'm representing work right. So they know. might be at the bowl game right now. They play, they, they play they Frisco probably, tomorrow. Yeah, they probably are up in in, in Frisco right now. But hopefully you can enjoy a little bit of downtime during yeah, the holidays. Yeah, I will for sure. Crank it up again in January. Yes, yes, yes. I, I love everything. If people want to find out more about you or just get exposed to some of the things that you're talking about, maybe there are educators out there yeah. or, or young people considering a career in education. How can they find you or what advice would you give them? So um, if you want to find me, uh, the best place on social media is LinkedIn, Langston Clark. There's not too many of us out there, so you're not going to find a whole bunch of Langston Clark. So you can find me there. Uh, you can also feel free to uh, email me at langston.clark at utsa.edu for yeah. more information about um, just wanting to connect or anything like that. I didn't ask you about this before, but I do want to put this opportunity out there. Sure. Um, I do have funding for a graduate research assistant. Uh, to come in and be my doctoral student starting next fall. So if there's anyone who is interested in um, education, anyone interested in doing research or the experiences of men of color in teaching and things like that, uh, who would like to work on some research along those lines, but then also get their doctorate at the same time, feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. And, um, and yeah. I love it. I've always said, you know, books are great, but but nothing beats the the, the internship or, or or that that hands on experience yeah. being on a campus or being with someone like yourself. 
Um, so I would highly recommend if anybody out there that would take advantage of what you were talking about. That's an amazing opportunity. Yeah. What's up? Big plans for Christmas? What What do you want Santa to bring you? Um, big plans for Christmas. So, um, we are spending Christmas with my in-laws. We actually just had our Christmas party on Saturday, so that right. that big that big plan is over with. It. Okay. So that's that's a lot of work. Um, in terms of what do I want from Santa Claus, I hadn't really thought about that. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. I don't know. I, I have to think. Give me, give me, give me some time to think about that. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can message yeah. me later when you yeah. find out. But listen, I'm I'm so thrilled to have been able to meet you. Like I said, reading up on you, you just realize like you're like the perfect embodiment of what I've been talking about with city education partners in this group is you you've been here in this community for a while now doing these amazing things that maybe you don't get a lot of love in the press or in the media or, or on social media, but hopefully these conversations are just giving you a little insight into what people like Dr. Clark are doing on a daily basis and taking something like PE, you know, recess, maybe something that we've taken for granted over the years and really shedding a light on it and, and showing kind of the impact it can have for, for everybody, for, for, uh, you know, uh, minorities and those kinds of things and so uh, it's great stuff man yes thank you for having me love it all Pleasure. the best to you happy new year yes happy and new keep year. Merry Christmas. Christmas. and birds up i guess we've got a, we got a, we got a yes, bowl game tomorrow right. right we're gonna get that w too that's what i want for christmas i want an early christmas oh! gift. i want i want santa claus right to deliver that first bowl game victory that's what i want coach, i like i mean i like their chances coach trailer is santa claus this year <laughs> it's trailer Claus. Co Co trailer Claus is going to deliver <laughs> that W. That's what I think is going to happen. We'll be watching to tomorrow night. It's a late kickoff at eight o'clock. We'll be watching, and uh, he might even have his UTSA tie on. That's Who knows? Right. Who knows? Dr. Clark, great to see you, sir. Thank All you. the best to you and your family. It. Happy holidays. There you have it. Another episode of Pickup Lines presented by Gomez Law Firm. We've got another one before Christmas. I'm going to sneak in one more episode later this week before Christmas. But again, find Dr. Clark on LinkedIn or social media if you'd like to connect with him. And until next time, I'm Ernie Zuniga. Have a great day. Happy holidays. See you next time.